Another little hint for uh, um, deburring holes in tight places. This, let's see if I can get this to show up. This is a um, center drill. It's different from a countersink in such that it has a uh, tip on it, a straight tip that um, will go into a pre-drilled hole or a, uh, a nicely center punched hole to uh, taper it out to this bigger size so you could drill easier. So this is not a countersink. This is this particular one is a number two um, center drill. And in areas like this, on the uh, trailing, ed trailing edge skin of the flap, I use these to get up and get the back side of these holes here. And basically all you, all you do is just put it in the hole and spin it a couple times to uh, deburr the back side. And I like using these because, like I said, they've got that... Uh, They've got that, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, I guess you can call it a pilot tip that fits in here quite nice. It's not a perfect fit, but it doesn't need to be because you're only deburring. And that's as easy as it gets to get some of these hard to reach places. So, just something to consider when you're trying to figure out how to deburr some tight areas. I'm getting ready to rivet the skins onto the flap, but before I get to that, I want to point out a few things. First of all, this is the bottom of the flap. This is the bottom skin. The top skin comes across the top and then it comes around and it overlaps this bottom skin. So this row of dimples, these need to be done with the um, substructure dies because there's another dimple that fits inside this dimple. So this needs to be done with the substructure because the top skin will lay over top. Uh, let's see, the other thing that I wanted to point out or the other things that I wanted to point out. Of course you've got the spar. Make sure that you dimple the top of the spar. Again this will get substructure dies because there's a skin that lays inside there's a skin dimple that lays inside the spar dimple. And the bottom of the spar gets countersunk because the hinge is going to rest underneath here. So this needs to be flat. So you countersink this deep enough for a skin dimple. But the bottom has to re remain flat for the, skin, for the uh, hinge. And what else? What else? What else? I think that was the big thing. Just making sure that this row gets the substructure dies because the top skin will lay over top of it. And I don't have the top. Well, I have the top skin over here. I don't know if it will show, but again, since this part of the skin lays on top of the bottom skin, you want to put a little bit of a break here. You want that little bit of a break along this edge so when you dimple you won't have any gaps here. It won't pucker up if you will. And I believe that's it that I can think of at the moment. But if I think of anything else I'll come back. But for now I'm going to start riveting. And finally I am getting ready to rivet the spar into place on the flap which will then of course close up the flap so you won't have any access inside. So double check and make sure you have all your rivets in. Make sure that they're um, airworthy. If you have to do any drilling of rivets you got to do it now before you close off with the spar. Make sure that you have your pop rivets in if you need to use pop rivets, make sure you have those in both on the bottom side of the flap and on the top side of the flap. Just make sure everything is done before you start um, riveting the spar. The other thing that I like to do after I get the skins completely riveted before I do the spar riveting, I like to clean out inside any little debris. I can see some in here still. So I'll vacuum this out a little bit and I'll blow it out with some air before I put the spar in. 
The other thing you want to make sure that you do is make sure that you rivet this bracket, this aluminum bracket, to the spar. You only do these, one, two, three, four, five, these five rivets. These have to be A and rivets. These cannot be pop rivets. That's stated on the instructions. These three here, these are my Clecos. These three get riveted in place with the rib. So you just do these five, but make sure you get those in. Because again, once you get the spar started, you can't get to these. Um, and like I said, they cannot be pop rivets. So that's kind of where I am at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and put the spar in here. And what I'm not going to do, I'm going to put the spar in and I'm going to rivet the bottom rivets with the hinge in place. I'm going to uh, put this in, not rivet it, but I'm going to put this in and Clico it with, with the hinge. But I am not going to Clico these top line rivets. The reason is when you have the spar in here, you have it Clicoed here with the hinge. The first rivets you, you want to set are these pop rivets here on each rib. In order to get to these bottom holes with your pop riveter, you need to bend this down out of the way. If you have this row, if you have this row here of holes clicoed to the spar, it makes this a lot more stiff and a lot more difficult to bend and you run the risk of putting a crease on it. So leave these clicos out so you've got a lot of flex here so you can get this bottom row of rivets on your um, ribs. And then after that you can go to town, I believe, but uh, I'll see if that's true as I get into it. All right, let me uh, let me get cracking on this. And we'll see what gives.